G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. We are down here in the warehouse today. I am putting together some orders, some book orders, getting them out to the internet. Jump on the link below if you'd like to buy a book of mine from the website, it would be greatly appreciated, along with prints. Yes, indeed. I create prints down here. These sorts of, this is, this is, a, this is a bit of a print. Sometimes we just do a little, a little test strip. Here's, here's another print. There's another print you can see there. And talking about something new, something a little bit exciting. It's always great to have your mind across the market. When you're so deeply into the space that I'm in, which is photography, content creation, media creation, about half of what I do now is actually making videos. This week, I made a video using the Z8, the 50mm 1.2, the 85 1.2 lenses. We had a super tight turnaround. We had to turn around a 15 minute video in 48 hours. A whole day of shooting, then sort of one and a half more than eight hour days of editing. I look forward to showing you the behind the scenes of how that video was made. What did I do? I was a one person production team and it was absolutely fantastic using the Z8, using the DJI mics to get the sound, Manfrotto tripod and the MCN 10 grip. Because I'm in that creation space and because I'm always searching out the best options for all different use cases in the market. And there are all sorts of people who wanna do different things with different sized cameras. And today we're talking about what Fuji considers to be their flagship camera in their APS-C range, X-H2S. What's exciting to me about this camera is that it brings a lot of technology at a pretty affordable sort of price point. To the best of my understanding, this continues to be the only stacked sensor APS-C camera on the market. And on the front of it here, we have the 13 mm 1.4 lens, native XF mount lens from Viltrox. More coming on that lens soon. Let me know in the comments if you're interested to see more. But what I'm super excited to share in today's video is that Fujifilm Australia has reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try out some cool lenses on this flagship APS-C camera? And I said, absolutely, yes, send me some lenses. Now we've got more exciting lenses coming soon, but to begin with, we've started with some interesting prime lenses from Fujifilm. First, we have the 30 mm 2.8. Next, we have the 60 mm 2.4. Is this perhaps the first 2.4 lens that I've ever had or played with? It might be. And then finally, we have the 80 mm 2.8, which has optical image stabilization within it. These are macro primes, but they can also be used as I have shown in other videos macros can be used for everything they are not just for macro photography now of course because we have an APS-C crop which is a 1.5 crop on the Fujifilm system it means the 80mm lens becomes a 120mm field of view equivalent the 60mm lens it becomes a 90mm field of view equivalent and the 30mm lens it becomes a 45mm field of view equivalent I look forward to running all of these lenses through their paces. Now Fuji, the X-H2S, this is a 6K camera. It allows full open gate recording, which means you can use all of the sensor to record. And what this allows is for your frame to be more vertically oriented. It's not that it is vertically oriented, but it's more vertically oriented than it normally is. But open gate seems to be becoming a little bit of a thing, and I'm sure we'll see it more and more in more cameras. And as I said before, that Fujifilm do consider the X-H2S their flagship APS-C camera because it's the only one in their line that has a stacked sensor. This is an extraordinarily powerful camera. It recently had firmware update 3.0, increasing all sorts of things, including the AF, which we will have a look at with these lenses and future lenses. Fujifilm will soon be sending me the X-T5 and a whole bunch of awesome, super fast Fujifilm primes. And I can't wait to try them out and see what it's like to work 
with an APS-C system, 26 megapixels, stack sensor, super fast, and can see in the dark. So lots more to come on the channel when it comes to Fujifilm, and today I just really wanted to share with you that we'll be spending some time in this space I can't wait to see what this camera is all about. Something that I love about this little APS-C camera is the fact that it has a full-sized grip. It still feels great in the hand. Even so, the optics are much smaller than the optics that we would normally get with a 35mm camera. So there is absolutely no reduction in ergonomic quality by going with APS-C in this particular case. And whether it's the X-H2S, this one, or the X-H2, which is a 40 megapixel sensor, but it is not stacked. And that sensor is the same sensor that's in the X-T5. Fuji have got some really interesting cameras here at the high end of their APS-C space. And they're always releasing new cameras that are in their entry level and mid-tier as well. And I'd also like to think that we would hopefully see some more cameras coming in the GFX range. It's been a couple of years now, I think, since we had the last GFX camera, and I am super duper excited by the idea of small, medium format. I just think it's a really interesting sensor size for people with use cases like mine. It is definitely not for everybody, but if you do a lot of work with people, which I do, and if you do a lot of work that's architectural or landscape, which I do, then these sorts of sensors make a lot of sense. Now, of course, it's a completely different concept to what we see here. This is all about being small and light and easy to travel with. That is not the idea around the GFX small medium format range. The idea of that range is for optimal image quality. And we're talking about sensors that at this stage go up to 100 megapixels. Now, I think we've seen the fact that Sony have released an even larger small medium format sensor, which I think off the top of my head is 125 megapixels. Here is that exciting sensor from Sony released on March 9th, 2021. As we can see, here is the press release and it is 127.68 megapixels. That is absolutely epic. But one of the things that I think is even more exciting than the pixels, because quite frankly, I'm happy to have less pixels and more other stuff if there's going to be any trade-off. It also features Sony's original global shutter pixel technology, Pregis, which enables capture of motion distortion-free images. Furthermore, the Sony's original device configuration and interface and interface technology employed enable high-speed image readout at a data rate nearly four times faster than conventional products. And if we go down and look at the actual spec, and there's lots of interesting stuff here, go check it out. I mean, it's just cool to see that this technology, <laughs> it talks about running at almost 13 frames a second at 14 bit. That's pretty damn awesome. And if you wanted to drop down at say 12, 12 bit, you get almost 20 frames per second. Crazy stuff. This is a sensor that Sony has released for anybody to purchase and it's now about two years old. So literally anybody could use this, but we can see it's a whopping sensor, it's fast, it's global, it has a lot of resolution. Imagine if you did this with 100 megapixels or you even did this with 50 or 80 megapixels. Theoretically, let's say you did 60, so it's half the size of this one, then really you could get that data off if you use the same backside technology at twice the speed we're seeing here. So 14 bit at say 25 frames per second. I think they would be very expensive, even two years after launch. I'm not sure we've seen any of these sensors in any of the consumer level cameras that we talk about. It's possible that there are some higher level cine cameras that cost tens of thousands of dollars that might have these. I'm not sure if there's any kind of small, medium format level cameras, but yes, we can see here, look at the size of it. It's this whole array here is something like seven centimeters or over two inches, almost three inches in size. This is expensive technology. And what we get from this is that the medium format space has still got a long way to go. Sony is still innovating. 
And if anybody wants to put their own formula together from Sony's technologies, which we can see that people like Hasselblad are also using these chips along with Fujifilm, well, anything could happen. Whether the GFX range goes to those higher megapixels or whether they stick at 100 megapixels and add more features to their sensors, from my perspective, I would prefer them to stay at lower megapixels and increase the, the speed of the sensor, dynamic range, ISO performance, along with sensor read speed, which would make it better in regards to things like rolling shutter and also make it more useful for video recording. I'd certainly like to see the GFX100 do that. It's, it, it, it would be intriguing to me, the idea of shooting video full frame on a GFX. Can you imagine shooting full frame on a GFX? It's not going to be quite looking like IMAX, but it's certainly an interesting idea, that really large glass. So I can only hope in the future the GFX range does get faster sensors and the video side of those cameras becomes even more useful than it is today. Anyway, right now we're going to kick off over the next few weeks looking at this camera with these lenses, X-T5 to come along with some awesome prime lenses. And who knows what else the rest of the year holds. But this video is about giving you an opportunity in the comments below to tell me what should I do with these lenses? As I know less about Fuji than I do other brands, what would you like to see me shoot? I'll do my best within my working life and my YouTube life, which are two separate lives, to get as much of that done as I can. All right, let's chat more about this in the comments below. It's been so good to see you today. And if this is your first time here, come on back. We can hang out together. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like, and please do click on the notification bell. I've still got people saying to me who are subscribed, they're subscribed, they've even pressed on the notification bells, and they're still not being alerted. I release a video at least one, and usually two, a week. So I'm still here. All right. Take care. I'll see you soon.